Well, good morning, everybody. Chuck here with No Time To Be Sad. I wanna to talk to you guys today about our trip to Malaysia and our up and coming trip. Today is our last day here in Tapanong before we head on our next a little over two week journey to, uh, to paradise, I'll just say. But I wanna to talk to you guys about Malaysia. I waited a little bit of time because I was getting a lot of feedback from other people that live there or have visited there, giving suggestions and talking about their experiences. And I want to put all of this together and talk to you a little bit about Malaysia. First, I want to tell you that it was really a wonderful experience uh, for me. We've traveled to many places. Uh, J Japan was a wonderful experience too, but I expected that Japan would be really, really cool. My expectations were pretty low about, about Malaysia. We went with George. Actually, George was in China when we booked everything. He was doing business over there and um, they came back a little bit early so we invited them to go with us which is a definite added bonus because george has lived there for over 30 years and has a lot of knowledge about things but we'd already planned most of the trip just kind of wandering around in certain areas that i picked out a lot of people were making suggestions on not going to the places that we went to but as a first time tourist to many places i think a lot of people tend to want to go where they can research and find information about, especially in kind of touristy areas. So we, we wanted to really experience the, uh, the metropolitan areas, the areas that provided a lot of attractions, things to see, and just basically to see if this is a place that we want to return. And then that's usually how we do it. And then later on, we'll return and we'll go see other places. If we don't like the initial part then chances are we're probably not gonna go back like japan our plan actually we planned on going outside the city the first time we went but because of problems with weather we decided to stay in tokyo and we definitely are gonna go outside of the places in malaysia next time so i wanted to go down to the east side where all the beautiful islands and stuff are but I was told, and I don't know 100%, and I, I have to rely on other people uh, like Daz, who's been there many times, some of the information that they share, that a lot of the resorts in those areas are not open, and it's not really a good time to go because it's monsoon season. And the weather is very unpredictable. So a lot of people were saying, I went to the wrong place, I should have went there. I would expect the experience that they have, they probably know, but maybe they didn't know that a lot of places were, were not available. To, and why would you want to go to the beautiful beach uh, in the rain, you know? I mean, when you have a couple of different options. We got really lucky in Malaysia with the weather. The weather, it only rained a few times, but prior to us getting there, they said it rained like every day. So we really got lucky with that. I feel like Malaysia is a good option of a place to stay, I want to say like long term. A lot of people said, that, that a lot, well, the people that we met there have lived there for quite a while and they didn't really have anything negative to say, I guess because they've adapted. I, it takes a, a certain kind of person to be able to leave their country and go live in another country that's not theirs and be able to adapt. They gotta be easy. They have gotta be able to use the resources around them and they gotta use the tools that they have, whether it's a, a language app or, or, or finding a friend to help them kind of acclimate or paying for services uh, that you can't do yourself because of the, the, the language barrier or whatever, whatever it is. So a lot of these people who've lived there a long time they've already adapted, but they, they didn't have a whole lot bad to say other in, in Malaysia that they changed the requirements for long stay and it's out of reach. Like they pretty much did this to rid the country of expats. 
And uh, that was pretty much what all of them said about that. Uh, the ones that were there obviously had the funds to, to stick it out. But they all said that it is going to change most likely by the end of the year probably back to the way that it was because i it's like every every time it's same with thailand like they may make a real change and then realize well that didn't work like they couldn't really foresee the consequences uh, of that but maybe it was a planned deal maybe they wanted to try to get rid of certain types of people and that was the best way that they could do it i don't know the thinking of that um, it's too complicated sometimes to think uh, to think of why the governments do certain things when it comes to immigration every anywhere we will return to Malaysia and you know I have my mom here so I have a big responsibility with my mom my mom is pretty much well taken care of um, she, well I should say she's pretty much self-sufficient at this point so I will say also that you know we try to not live life so permanent with everything when it comes to things with just the out basic outlook and and our things that are around us and i think that's the best way me and paige can handle that is because of whatever happens whatever gossip is on the internet about this or that it's like who cares you know like if they want to do it it's their country that's it's what you worrying about it or whatever is not going to do do any good but if you have a lot of obligations and you have a lot of ties somewhere then it be i think it becomes more stressful knowing that okay shit, if this happens what am i going to do now i'm going to be out quite a bit it's easy to be pretty flexible here it's easy <laughs> And, and I'm not going to I'm not going to bash people that have bought homes and settled in. I mean, everybody can do whatever makes sense to them for sure. And a lot of people that do that have Thai uh, are in a Thai relationship where they they know that uh, everything is secure because it's, it's in their name. They don't have to worry about anything unless they are no longer together. Then obviously, you know, that's gone too so i try to tell people to be as fluid as possible because you can rent just about anything like fully furnished relatively uh, well really really cheap i don't i don't gonna sit here and weigh out well you know you save this much money by doing this and that it, for me i'm only talking about the having a sense of freedom like the things around you, it doesn't really matter because you can just pick up and leave. I, I think Malaysia is, su is such an awesome place that me and Paige could just pick up and leave and go there, you know, maybe half of the year or go to Vietnam or go wherever we want. I mean, it's a, our stuff our stuff is not going to wither away here at my mother-in-law's house. <laughs> and uh, this house right here is in Paige's name anyway so this is going to be always our home base here but I am trying to tell people if if you could have a little less sense of ownership I think things things just kind of brush off you like okay well whatever it's up to them that's what they want to do you know <laughs> it ain't going to cost me much you know I don't plan on going back to the United States you know worst case scenario I will you know I go get a travel trailer and do do what I want to do in the United States and my mom can come with me it's not a problem my mom is not anchored down in the Kompanom hopefully my mom likes to stay there and she can stay there for quite some time my future outlook is my mom is going to stay here or she wants to go into a condo somewhere by the water it's still up to her health providing you know as long as she can have she can take care of herself or we can manage somebody to take care of her in her late 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 years you know but I think people worry too much about just got gossip and a lot of stuff on the internet is only for clicks you know they want you to watch their their video so it's like oh my god this is coming to an end we all have to figure out what we're gonna do people send me emails talking about how they've already pre-invested in Thailand and they're so disappointed about whatever gossip of the week law that um, a politician has said and the media has put it out there and kind of twisted it up a little bit they're like freaking out like what do i how do i get my money out of there what do i do i'm like oh my god are you serious you know 
I don't want to get into a lot of this stuff, but you know, like the 35% tax, like people are actually freaking out about it. And I don't blame them. It's because the stuff that they see on the internet, you know, but they don't want to read, you know, they don't want to have common sense about it. You know, they just want to listen to everybody. Oh my God, you're everything you're going to, every time you bring money over there, they're going to want to charge you 35%. Yeah. Is that really, is that really going to work out for anybody? You know, it's all, it's not, it's about businesses. People, I don't know. You, you know what? I'm not going to try to explain it to you. Instead of looking at those, you can actually go on the internet and look at actual government mandates and information and stuff like that. And uh, you can, you can find stuff to get, maybe, maybe the, the law is not a hundred percent. Maybe it'll change. But a lot of times when they realize, oh crap, that didn't work, <laughs> then they'll change it. That happens a lot. But I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever happens, I'll adjust and we'll, we'll make it work another, another way. So we probably, well, we're definitely gonna go spend a lot more time by the beach, uh, on an island. I, I think it's easy for me and I feel more welcome there because they give you a 90, like, here you go, here's a 90 day visa, enjoy your time. We'll see you whenever it's done. You know, I don't feel like I have an obligation to the, immigration there like uh, that would be weird like I want to come on vacation and now I have to try to somehow deal with immigration there I, I don't really want to do it. I just want to go visit I want to relax have a couple cocktails maybe buy some trinkets and, and just relax I don't want to think about a government problem in some country that it's not my problem you know so it's a feeling of welcomeness over there and hopefully Thailand will learn from their mistakes and move forward i think they're going through some struggles due to having nobody coming here for the last three years so by them making horrible choices about stuff and the gossip is really killing them because people are it's deterring people from considering anything in thailand because of all the gossip on on the on the internet and then it's not just uh, youtubers it's actual officials saying stuff without being clear i think about what they're saying which is kind of typical i think with with any government and and not quite understanding the consequences but for people that want to come here i mean we have a, we don't have to come here we don't have to spend money here we don't have to do anything you know so we'll see we'll see how it plays out but we <laughs> i really enjoy my freedom I, I feel more free in thailand than i have felt anywhere in the world and and i prefer thailand over malaysia because it's more it's more liberal like it's more up to you you know i really i really enjoy that if you want to stay here stay here if you don't then don't if you don't like what the government says then leave if you don't like this or that then just go like nobody's keeping you here nobody's keeping me here i can do I've, as long as i have a passport <laughs> i guess i can go anywhere my passport will take me you know but i don't have a whole lot of ties other than you know my mom is here but that's really not that big of a deal like that's it's really not my mom's not anchored in anywhere <sighs> plus they speak english in malaysia maybe mom would like that <laughs> I, uh, I don't know we'll, we'll see what the future holds we are headed to jom tian um actually we're headed to karat in the morning and then we're headed to Jom Tien in a couple of days. I didn't want to really publish too much because I'm only there for a couple of days. I'm there to see uh, a lawyer, the lawyer that I recommend on my channel. And it's also a law firm. I want to clarify some things about them uh, and, the, and what they offer to my viewers. I, I'm not an affiliate from anybody, really. I just like to share things that actually work and things that will benefit you coming into Thailand as a foreigner. So it's like, if something happens, like you get in a car accident, well, you don't really know what to do. You don't know how to explain to them. You're, even if you could speak Thai, you're probably limited on communicating enough to be able to calm the situation. So having a, like a law firm on retention, 
at your disposal is a benefit for you. So I wanna to talk to you guys about some tools, like I mentioned earlier, to make your life successful in Thailand by having, uh, it's, it's called Thai legal protection, and by having them on your side for, for about whatever, for about the cost of a massage, <laughs> basically. Um, you know, you, you'll have them on your side. But I wanna take you guys there and, and meet, let you meet them, and then we'll talk about some things that might help you along the way. But they're gonna assist me, and, and I'm gonna back up a little bit on the being permanent anywhere, because my plan is actually to stay here. Like I sold everything in America, and my plan was to retire permanently in Thailand because my wife is Thai and we want to stay here in this house and eventually remodel this house and just stay here and our plan was just to travel a little bit around and go outside the country and travel and just enjoy life that was our our plan all along so i don't want to go back i don't want to live anywhere else but it's good to have options if something happens that you can you can go back and forth somewhere and you realize these things on the way. But I'm gonna to talk to him about getting a permanent residence here. I've mentioned this already a couple of times and um, I'm gonna to attempt to try to apply for that next year. The deadline is actually the end of this month to apply. So I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till next year at the beginning of the year to apply. And, you know, if I get this, I, I feel like I've got a pretty strong chance of getting. I feel like I, I can read and write. I, I've taken the time to learn how to read and write the Thai language. And, and I can speak okay. I know I could speak a lot better if I wasn't doing YouTube. Because I'm surrounded by people that speak Thai constantly. But I'm always thinking in English. So I need to freshen up on, on my speaking language here in the next few months. So... But I want to talk to him about that. And they're going to assist me on that as well. And I, I think them doing that will also boost their credibility too. This channel has helped them get a lot of customers. Uh, probably thousands of customers. And just about everybody is happy with their service. And I'm just, I'm glad that it, that it worked for them. They have actually offered to make me an affiliate. But I don't, I don't want it. I don't want to work basically i don't want any money coming into thailand that doesn't have to do with my savings <laughs> you know I, I don't need that and i don't need the money going back home I, I don't really need the money i'm only doing this to help them but what they did offer me was a free membership so i have them on re legal retention for anything i need um, in, in thailand and outside of thailand also Anyway, enough about that, but that's some of the reason why I'm going to Jom Tien, and then we're going to Khot Chang with Daz. Daz will be coming with us. We'll be going for five days, and then we're headed to Khot Mak for two days. Back to Khot Chang one night, and then headed to the city of Jantak Bori for one night, and then Buri Ram, and then we're headed actually to uh, Dave Gotta Love Thailand's new house build party i promised him that we would make it for there and then when we get back we'll see what happens we got a, you know we got a, we got a busy next few months i do have to get my extension taken care of uh, for the following year uh, one extension at a time you know basically it's a little stress let me tell you the only reason why i want to do the permanent resident thing it's not that i can feel like i'm special um, it's not like i'm going to wear a something on my chest and say oh i'm this you know i've been here this long this is what i've got because ultimately nobody cares especially thai people even if you had a thai passport you're still going to be a falang you're always going to be a foreigner so don't ever think that being permanent over you're still always going to be look like looked at as an outsider here even if you can speak fluent thai nobody cares you're still <laughs> falang <laughs> but you can speak thai that's awesome i have a couple of thai friends that are half American and they look like me, but they were born here <laughs> and the, I told them it's a benefit You know, it's definitely a hundred percent benefit because you can shock and all of them, you know, it's funny because yeah It is pretty funny, but it's annoying they said <laughs> but my my goal is to 
not deal with immigration you know not ha i won't have to do the 90-day check-ins i won't have to do the extensions i won't have to show the financials i can easily get um I can easily get a, a benefit a lot. Like if I want to have a business, I can already own a business in Thailand because Americans have a pretty good treaty with Thailand, especially on the tax treaty. But my only goal is to not have to deal with, with the immigration, the bank statements, the 90 day check-ins and all that stuff. And this permanent resident is permanent. Uh, it's just, I don't know exactly 100%. I think it's just a stamp in your passport that says you can stay here permanently, you know. Then I guess you can, if you've got to get a new passport, you just get another stamp. I'm not a thousand percent sure on that. That's what the law office said to me. But it's just a sense, a little bit more sense of freedom that I'll have, you know. If I do want to work somewhere, get a work permit, it's like nothing when you have that luxury. So... I just only thing I need to do is I need to pass a Thai speaking test and I've already been tested on on it and I've already can I think I'm already okay like I can pass it but I, you know I don't know where the conversation will go and I don't really think they're gonna expect a lot of people say you got to sing the national anthem well I, I mean Paige can't even sing that I don't, I don't think that's really honestly the case Unless somebody has one and you can share it here in the comment section. Uh, but if that's the case, I'll just, I could learn that. I just, you know, just like singing a song, I can, I can learn how to do that. I don't know what the benefit of that is. If you can speak some Thai, you know, and I, like I said, I don't think they want you to just be completely fluent in Thai. They want you to be able to know, they you know the basic stuff and be able to get along. And they're going to look at your financials too, to make sure that you have had enough money in Thailand. Um, where did the money come from? They're going to look at all of that from me and they'll make the decision from there. So I know if you're on a little, you know, I'm not on a little mini pension. I'm not uh, on that. I'm, I've always had quite a bit of money here and I, I have money in joint accounts that I don't know if they accept that too. Well, we have many investments here in, in Thailand, but if they'll accept that and not just personal, my own personal stuff, I don't have any investment accounts because I can't as a foreigner. That's why I have accounts with my, my wife here. But he, I don't think that's going to be an issue. And, you know, on the fact that I've been married for 15 years to a, a national um, and good standings in Thailand, and I can speak the language pretty well. I don't speak it a lot here. And it's difficult to be talking in English and then all of a sudden ramble off something in Thai. It doesn't come out right. I, I, I know every time. And, and I don't want to, I'm too lazy to do subtitles. <laughs> so I, I don't really do much speaking in, in Thai uh, on the channel, but my Thai is definitely not fluent. I can tell you that right now. I need, I need to fr freshen up on it. Anyway, that's what's going on. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Malaysia being flexible in Thailand, not concerning yourself so much about politics here that really don't affect you you know unless you're here to earn money from overseas you know then maybe it's a problem but i think most western countries have a tax treaty with thailand and i don't think that's going to matter too much they're not going to rewrite that and if they did it's definitely going to backfire and I, I i would think the government here is smart enough to to realize that if you want to just take some savings and bring it over here because that's what they expect you to do they expect you to have money here as a retiree and they expect you you know you're allowed to have 800,000 baht right but you can't touch that three months before and three months after and it can only go 400 well what are you supposed to do in the meantime you need to have some some money it's got to come from somewhere if you're retired that you can't work so you got to bring it in from over states where your money is at you actually believe that they're going to tax you on that 35 percent i mean that's that's stupid to think that anybody has an empty brain that's going to say oh let's we're going to tax every dollar that comes in here and especially it's written out in a way that is to me understandable but i don't know how it gets twisted up <laughs> it's it's funny i guess but it's all about the clicks i i, I suppose 
I hope you guys come with us. Uh, sorry for my rambling. We, uh, I'm gonna continue this video. We're gonna have a Thai style like um, barbecue this evening, um, kind of a going away <laughs> party. Always a reason to party. Uh, we're gonna have a little uh, Isan style barbecue. I hope you guys come with us. Anyway, thanks for hearing me ramble. Good morning. Some chai. How are you? Oh. Happy. Happy. It's so good, it's making me cry. Alright guys, gonna end the video. Tomorrow we're headed to Parat. I just want everybody to know that this whole next trip is Paige's idea. I promised her before my mom got injured that I would take her to call Chan by the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So this uh, yeah. this next adventure before the end of the year is for Paige. Anyway, I love Ko Chang. We love Ko Chang. It's going to be fun. I hope you guys come with us. It'll be a, a two-week adventure. Bye.